a little bit of a break there. Okay, we'll try this again. So processes suck. We know that we need them. We have a desire for them. We want that checklist of things that we're supposed to do. Oh, hey, good morning, Brooke. Brooke says I'm talking to her, so all right. We want that checklist of things to do, so we want that process. But So why do they suck? Because we don't want to make them. Two reasons I think we don't want to make them. One is because it, it infers a commitment. If I build a process that says, this is what I'm going to do in the mornings, this is what I'm going to do in the evening, this is what I'm going to do when a customer calls, it infers that we are committed to that process. And in fact, we are. You can design a great process. If you don't follow it, it's not going to work. So you have to be committed to it. That's one reason. But the second reason, I think this is probably uh, as likely, if not more likely, than the commitment part is because it requires us to move out of our technician role and into the business owner role. And it look, it doesn't matter whether you're an employee or the or the business owner. You are in you're in a technician's role most of the time. If you own the business, you started the business because of something that you like to do, the result that you like to create. That's the technician role. That's working in the business. But we have to, to create a process, we have to take a step back and say, okay, if I were going to teach this to somebody else, if I wanted somebody else to do this work, this is the process they would have to go through. That requires more of a, a systems point of view. Uh, in fact, I got a quote here from a guy named Peter Singh. Systems thinking is a discipline of seeing the whole. We have to take a step back so we can see the whole thing from beginning to end. These are the steps that need to occur. And even if it's just your morning routine, I and I hear this a lot, well, but you don't understand, it's different for me. Things have to be flexible. Things are dynamic. Things change every day. You get to choose whether they're the same every day or not. So that's why we have such a hard time with process is because um, it requires us to commit and it requires us to back out of our technician's role. And backing out of that technician's role, that's uncomfortable for a lot of us. But strong processes build strong businesses, right? The parts of the business with a process become the ones that are very predictable for your day, right? Strong processes build strong days. The part that has a process is the part that's very predictable. Anxious anxiety is worrying about worry. Right? Think about that for just a minute. Anxiety is worrying about worry. I'm worried about being worried. Right? So when we feel anxious, when we are uh, have some measure of anxiety about how my day is going to go, if I'm going to get all this stuff done today or not, we're worrying about worrying about getting everything done. Well, predictability short circuits that, right? If I have the same routine, the same process every morning, then I don't have to worry about whether I'm going to be on time or not because I have the same process, right? If you have kids, teach this to your kids, right? Have the same process. It creates predictability. And then once that, that portion is predictable, God, it's almost like you have a crystal ball because you can think about other parts of the business or other parts of your day and not have to think about this part. It's scripted. It's predictable. All right. So strong processes build strong businesses or strong days. And but it also builds strong leaders. Right. Makes you into a better leader. As I said before, you have to take a step back from the technician's work to actually look at this, the, the broader picture of what's going on. And when you're able to do that, two things happen. One is you're able to uh, teach or hand off, if you have a business, this part to someone else. How can you possibly hire an employee if you can't write down the process that you want them to follow? What are they going to do? And I, I run into this all the time where people hire an employee and they can't, they have no idea what they're going to do. Every day is a new day. I come in and tell you every day what I want you to do. That still leaves you as the single point of failure, right? So before you hire, write the process. And from the process, 
uh, then you can write the job description. So number one, it allows you to teach and leverage, this is the big thing, leverage other people's time, talent, and resources to get your work done. Right? But number two, it relieves stress for you. We already talked about that, how having the process, making it very predictable, means I know what's going to happen, don't have to worry, don't have to stress out about it. All right, so that's process and why it sucks and why we need it. That's what we're talking about this week, processes and systems. I know from a, from a title point of view, I struggled last night coming up with a great title for this. It, it's not the most intriguing title to put on the theme for the week, but it's definitely something that we... <coughs> excuse me, we all need, we can all benefit from. See, even Heine says you need process. A sip of coffee. All right, so if you struggle with process, if you struggle with getting things done or anxiety, this week is the thing for you. Here's what I want you to take away today. One, we need processes. Two, having them creates predictability. Predictability lowers stress. That's really all we need to know. Right now, we're going to talk about how to build them and how to leverage them as we get deeper into the week. So stick with me tomorrow. We're going to talk about work less, how you can work less and do more. If that sounds interesting, be sure and be here tomorrow at seven o'clock for more seven minutes in the morning. Tag your friends or send them this video. Everybody needs this. I, I usually say if you know somebody that can benefit, everybody can benefit from this. And whether you're watching live or on the replay, I neglected to mention this at the beginning. <laughs> Be sure and leave me a comment. Say hi. Say good morning. I always enjoy seeing those comments. You can be just like Brooke and Joe and uh, get your comments heard and on the air. Uh, Joe says process is a secret ingredient for consistency. Absolutely. And when you can make it like this, then you don't even have to think about what comes next. It just happens. And one day you're going to wake up and be 15 steps into your morning routine and think, holy crap, did I really do all of that? <laughs> yeah, you did. And you didn't have to think about it. All that stress, all that anxiety is gone, and you're actually able to put mental cycles into something else. All right, that's it for today. For Monday, be sure and join me again tomorrow. Uh, yeah, right here, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning for more 7 Minutes in the Morning. Talk to you then. Have a great Monday.